Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Thursday, February 1, 2024. Government has officially launched the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, JSDI, offering a pool of funds from which locally made screen productions can receive financial support. With a budgetary allocation of $1 billion, Prime Minister Andrew Holness launched the JSDI at Jamaica House on Wednesday. Creators will be able to apply for grants or loans at different stages of production through the initiative, which is managed by the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO. It is accessible to creators of all genres of feature films and short films, animated shorts, web series or episodics, miniseries, reality and or unscripted content. The initiative is expected to be a key pillar in the growth of the local film industry. We are going to expand our ability to generate more revenues and then we're going to use those increased revenues to focus on the development of our people and our culture because it is the productivity of our people and our culture that will lead to peace and even greater productivity, which leads to prosperity. We want to see an industry that allows for the creation of high quality, commercially viable content, not just for domestic markets, but for global markets. Ultimately, we want to inject expenditure in the economy. We want to grow Jamaican jobs, and we want to increase the technical capacity of Jamaicans to produce commercial and commercial opportunities in filmed entertainment. Applicants for the JSDI must be Jamaican, 18 years or older. Companies must be registered in Jamaica with at least 51% Jamaican ownership. Other criteria are outlined at dobusinessjamaica.com. Applications for the JSDI open online on March 18 and close April 28 when verification and evaluation begins. Awardees will be notified on August 15. Clarification and sensitization sessions will take place on February 28 and March 2. The Agricultural Produce Amendment Act, which will facilitate the imposition of harsher penalties for predial larceny, has been gazetted and is now in effect. Minister of Agriculture, Fisheries and Mining Floyd Green made the disclosure during a press briefing at his ministry's offices on Wednesday. The maximum fine for breaches under the law has moved from $250,000 or three months in prison to $3 million or three years imprisonment. Giving an update on the Pradial Larceny Prevention Act, Mr. Green says the ministry is awaiting feedback from the Attorney General on the proposed amendments. So we do expect to take it to cabinet in this quarter, right? And then hopefully in very early in our new um, legislative year, we'll be able to get those amendments passed. In the meantime, he says significant stakeholder discussions are taking place in relation to embarking on a study examining the impact of predial larceny on agriculture. The agriculture minister adds that work is being done with the farmers in conjunction with the Pradial Larceny Unit to sensitize them on what they can do to make themselves more difficult targets. And a lot of our farmers, especially in the small room and space, are taking heat. So for example, moving from open grazing, where you tie out your animals, to establishing goat houses and putting in security systems around those houses. The Sugar Company of Jamaica Holdings, SCJH, is accelerating the pace of reallocating lands formerly used for sugarcane cultivation into alternative agricultural endeavors. Minister of Agriculture Floyd Green made the announcement during Wednesday's press briefing at his ministry. And I want to commend the Sugar Company of Jamaica because we have seen an acceleration of that. In fact, we have now about 65,000 acres that were former sugar lands that are now put into agriculture across different dispensations, whether it be cash crop, animal rearing, orchards, and other initiatives. The minister reveals that in 2023, an additional 2,500 acres of former sugarcane lands were put into different activities. So we had 17 cash crop allocations amounting to about 614 acres. Um, we had animal rearing, another 7.5 acres, 25 acres during the last year have gone into orchards. And we are seeing some excited initiatives come to the fore. In fact, one of the most notable allocations last year is the Sugar Company of Jamaica has leased now 
500 acres which will go into castor bean production for the development, significant development of our castor oil sector. He advises that a castor oil project is expected to be launched this year through private investment. 30 young women who reside in communities in Kingston and Portmore are to benefit from business development support to realize their entrepreneurial goals. This is being done through the Realize, Embrace, Achieve Your Purpose, Reap Women Entrepreneurship Project 2024, which was launched on Monday. It seeks to provide training opportunities, business coaching, mentoring, and financial support of up to $3 million to each entrepreneur. Industry Minister Senator Aubin Hill has lauded the project, which is funded by the PriceMart Foundation. He asserts that it is crucial for government, financial institutions, educational facilities, and the private sector to collectively help enhance the productivity of small and medium-sized enterprises to export and grow the country's GDP per capita. These endeavors are, ge are geared towards uplifting individual entrepreneurs propelling economic prosperity, fostering robust GDP growth, and enhancing Jamaica's position in the global market through expanded support. And finally, tomorrow, February 2, is World Wetlands Day. Guided tours of the Institute of Jamaica's field station in Mason River Clarendon will be the principal activity marking this year's observance. The 2024 celebrations are being held under the theme wetlands and human well-being. Students will be participating in brief tours of the Mason River Protected Area, which is situated on the border of Clarendon and St. Anne, and was formally established in 1963 to preserve Jamaica's only documented inland peat bog. It currently occupies 202 acres of land and was designated a bird sanctuary in 1998 and declared a national heritage and protected area in 2002. Local World Wetlands Day activities will also include a joint exhibition featuring members of the National Ramsar Convention, such as the Caribbean Coastal Area Management Foundation and the Institute of Jamaica Natural History Museum, among others. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, is spearheading the event. For more information, you can contact them at 876-754-7540. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.